Hello everybody. Today I am delivering third lecture of the module 7. Uh, in the earlier lecture, I have discussed the first order system and the method of converting a second order system to first order system. The set of equations in first order system which are uh, ordinary differential equations of first order are known as state space equation and the method itself can be called as a state space method for solving the dynamic problem. Now in the last class as you recall that I have discussed the free vibration problem basically to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the system and you have seen that eigenvalues and eigenvectors for augmented system that is the first order system turns out to be a complex number but complex number appears as a conjugate complex conjugate and therefore some advantage is obtained when adding and multiplying two complex number and adding a complex number because actually the output that we get the state variables are displacement and velocity should be a real quantity. Now today I will discuss the force vibration problem of the dynamic system using state space method and I will discuss how the eigenvalues and eigenvectors computed earlier or discussed earlier can be utilized to decouple the equation of motion. After that I will discuss some problems uh, that are of interest and can be handled by state space method because such problem have unique uh, feature that eigenvalues becomes time dependent. So one can recast such problems in a state space form and then uh, it is possible to solve a first order system easier than the second order system. So some examples I will give with moving oscillator, uh, pulsating force and rolling mass acting on a beam with constant velocity. So today's uh, outline of the lectures are force vibration problem using state pace method, uh, beam with moving oscillator, beam with pulsating force and rolling mass. So we have earlier obtained the state space equation in this form say A matrix, B matrix these are of size 2n by 2n. Actually original size was n by n and the state vectors here it is 2n cross 1 and force vector is also twice n cross 1. Original our original equation where the state variable was not involved then it was say m matrix acceleration mat uh, vector then your c velocity vector and k equal to some force time dependent force. So this was originally n by n system. and vector was n cross 1, n cross 1. Now state variable that you are seeing yt will consist of information about the displacement and velocity. So one block that is n cross 1 will contain say displacement and this next block say n cross 1 will contain the velocity. So once you solve the state vector yt simultaneously one can obtain the displacement and velocity. So this is one of the advantage of using state space method. The output of the state space method whether you adopt numerical techniques or closed form techniques the output that will yield simultaneously the displacement and velocity. Now here you can see the A matrix and B matrix contain the system parameters and these are called augmented system matrix. Previously system matrices was M, C and K. Now you can see here 
this augmented a matrix is null matrix m matrix m matrix and c and you can also observe this augmented matrix here is a symmetrical matrix and another augmented matrix say b is minus m null matrix here again null matrix and k matrix and augmented force vector is 0 q t and here all the uh, a and b matrices are symmetrical because if i partition this matrix each block is n by n and you can see that in respect of each block that matrix is symmetrical now we use a linear transformation because since the matrices are symmetrical the usual procedure of uncoupling the system equation in second order system can be used so let us proceed in that direction so let yt is the response vector is equal to u is the model matrix into z vector so z is a new state variable which contains the information of z dot uh, this y dot and z via this transformation so u is a model matrix that is very important so what does what does it mean it means that decoupling procedure requires first the eigenvalue analysis so without eigenvalue and eigenvectors i cannot or one cannot decouple the equation of motion this equation of motion is again coupled so we want decoupled equation of motion so that the solution can be obtained as a independent problem so that you are getting a independent first order system which can be solved very easily now let yt is equal to eigen vector arranged in column so this gives a model matrix here u is the model matrix that means after eigenvalue analysis we will get several eigen vectors which will be stored as a column matrix column vector so you to like that so if i place each eigen vector side by side i will get the matrix u that is the model matrix and each eigen vectors corresponds to a natural uh, eigen value that is here it is p1 here it is p2 like that so p1 p2 are the eigen values now let yt is equal to uz that linear transformation have to be used here to decouple the equation of motion now substituting this y is equal to u into z in this expression let us substitute this the first equation a matrix y dot t plus b into yt equal to f after substituting you will get uh, the matrix in this form a u is uh, constant quantity so uh, there is no necessity of differentiating this and z will be differentiated with respect to time so this dot represent differentiation plus d matrix into u z so only i use the transformation and that is the operation on the left hand side now this equation can be pre multiplied by ut so what is done here pre multiplying this equation previously after uh, substitution of uz we get this a u z dot plus b u z now as multiplying pre multiplying both sides by ut this superscript t represents this uh, transpose of this matrix u so after pre multiplying the equation is found as u t a u z dot plus u t b u z equal to u t f now since u t a u and u t b u are diagonal matrices that have been proved earlier while the proving the orthogonality conditions so are the diagonal matrices we get the decoupled equation in this form because uh, after triple multiplication here you will get a diagonal matrix so obviously 
the equation suppose if you do this triple multiplication you will obtain a diagonal matrix say a1 a2 like that up to a n a2 n so here it is obtained like that so at the rth equation we are getting the a r z dot r similarly here the diagonal the b this matrix after triple multiplication will be b1 b2 like that so here you will get say b r at rth mode equal to f r so here it will be a vector after multiplying with u transpose and f so this r actually ranges from 1 to 2n so you can find any model equation and then solve it so this is a first order equation and uh, one finds easier approach to solve this first order equation compared to second order equation because second order equation especially in presence of damping requires a impulse response function that contains exponential term and harmonic function so these two terms jointly appearing in the impulse response function complicates the integration process but here the integration will be very easier that uh, you can see later on so consider the eigenvector of the rth and sth modes because if i now consider the free vibration problem that we proved earlier in case of orthogonality condition we can write t s u r t a u s equal to minus u r t b u s remember that this is r and s are two different modes so this condition actually gives because again you will get the orthogonality condition if r is equal to s this matrix will give you the value pr one and similarly here you will get ar here you will get the value ar this triple product ur transpose a ur you will get the value ar so pr ar equal to minus here you will get br if r is equal to s if r is equal to not s then it will be zero because the matrices after triple multiplication with the model matrix transpose and a and model matrix gives a diagonal matrix so based on that this fact we can now write the state equation ar z dot r equal to pr ar z equal to fr so z dot minus pr z equal to fr by ar so this is the forcing term in the system equation and this equation is decoupled equation for the state space system now this is completely a first order equation where the solution will be simpler compared to second order equation okay now free vibration response first consider the free vibration response so in case of free vibration the forcing term fr equal to 0 so therefore we are getting z dot r minus p r z equal to 0 and z dot can be written as dz by dt because dot represents the time derivative so one can write this z r is equal to dz r by dt so therefore this equation this equation may result as dz r by z r from that side and here I am taking this dt on the other side so this is a simple equation and integrating both sides one can get log ezr equal to pr t so that is obtained here okay integrating both sides but you have to give a constant because this is a indefinite integral so a constant is written as in terms of log so this is the constant term that is written in terms of log so that we can get only single coefficient so the 
now this equation can be transferred in this form zr minus log e a r equal to p r t so using the logarithmic rule we can write zr by a r log e is equal to p r t so naturally the solution of zr is equal to exponential p r t very simple solution that you have obtained and therefore the constant of integration that is a single one that is ar is appearing here because first order equation has only single constant of integration for solving the initial value problem so therefore we have to convert this in this form now this equation is obtained now based on the initial condition this ar can be obtained and pr is the result of eigenvalue analysis of the state space equation now ar is also varies from 1 to 2n and this can uh, found if you know the initial condition and t is equal to t naught generally t naught is set to 0 response of the generalized coordinate now can be found out as yt is equal to uz previously we have used a transformation to decouple the equation of motion uh, in terms of uh, the generalized coordinate z now once the z are found then you can find the uh, response of the physical coordinate that is y is just the multiplication of u matrix and z vector so after obtaining z you can easily calculate the physical uh, response of the uh, response of the physical coordinates now time domain response if i consider for generally harmonic input or any other input we consider now here let us first find with a arbitrary force input that input may be your harmonic excitation or maybe a square wave or maybe any other form of excitation so the response for linear system is generally obtained by superimposing the homogeneous solution with the particular integral homogeneous solution is this this is the homogeneous solution already obtained so homogeneous solution is ar e to the power prt whereas particular integral remains unknown but the quantity in the right hand side that contains the forcing function was there so this is the quantity in the right hand side and with respect to this quantity ar of course is a constant and fr is a time varying function we now have to determine the particular integral okay to determine the particular integral for any arbitrary input we use the duhamel integral that we have used earlier in case of second order system duhamel integral requires the impulse response function so if hrt is the impulse response function in the rth mode then total response can be written as ar e to the power prt this is the homogeneous part and this is the particular integral so homogeneous part contains the constant of integration this is homogeneous part and this is nothing but the particular integral so particular integral here is evaluated evaluated by using duhamel's integral duhamel integral for the first order system so impulse response function for the first order system now we have to find out frt is known so impulse response function requires as a input here so let us calculate this impulse response function by definition is the vibration of the system or response of the system subjected to unit impulse so unit impulse has the characteristics that the unit impulse will be equal to change of momentum so that principle gives the initial velocity as 1 by m but in some system the coefficient of the derivative term 
is 1. So therefore, the velocity is taken as 1. So here, hr dot 0 is 1 because the coefficient of the z dot r was 1 and therefore, ar is equal to 1 because put t is equal to 0 here in this equation. So, you will get ar is equal to 1. So, therefore, impulse response function is simply hr equal to e to the power prt and hence we can write the complete response as zr equal to ar e to the power prt plus 1 by ar e to the power pr t minus tau. Tau is a variable used for integration into fr tau. fr tau is known, it may be a excitation of any form, may be a harmonic excitation or may be a ram function or may be a square waves, so many possibilities there or may be any arbitrary very random input also. So, this can be used to calculate the generalized coordinate zr. So, once the zr is found, then the response of the physical quantity is known as u multiplied by z vector. So, this linear transformation we have used for decoupling the equation of motion. Now, we can get the actual response response of the physical system, physical coordinate as u into z. Okay. Now, sometimes it is also advisable or some in some problems one can prefer the use of frequency domain method. So, in frequency domain method instead of a time history response we get the frequency response that means response of the system with the variation of the frequency of the exciting force. So, if such condition uh, is there the Fourier transform exists for the exciting force, then we can get the response of the generalized coordinate. Here z omega is the response of the generalized coordinate in frequency domain. So, it is written simply z omega is equal to h omega into f omega. h omega is the transfer function or frequency response function for the first order system. Okay fr is the uh, h omega is the frequency response function. Frequency response function is very important parameter and it is also called the transfer function. So, once you obtain z omega then one need to find the time response say z t by inverse Fourier transform. So, inverse Fourier transform is defined as the integration of z omega, z omega is this e to the power minus i omega t into d omega and integration limit can be extended from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, using this inverse transform we can now obtain the time response. Now, what is the frequency response function for the first order system? Let us see the first order system response to a harmonic input and the harmonic input of unit amplitude is assumed as fr is equal to e to the power i omega t. So, this is the uh, input to the first order system harmonic input. So, as a result of this harmonic input, the response of the first order system is also assumed as harmonic which is given as zr equal to h omega is the transfer function into e to the power i omega t where omega is the same frequency as the exciting force. So, now one need to evaluate this h omega. By definition, the frequency response function is the response to harmonic input of unit amplitude. So, if I substitute this uh, is z, this was the equation zr into fr into ar. So, what I do it, I will substitute this equation here 
to get the value of h omega so by doing this operation uh, in this equation h omega this equation is substituted and uh, we are getting that uh, h omega into i omega minus pr equal to 1 by ar so therefore h omega the transfer function in this case for first order case will be 1 by ar into 1 divided by i omega minus pr hence particular integral is zrt equal to 1 by ar minus infinity to plus infinity and this is what is this is nothing but this is nothing but z omega so this integration represents the inverse transform inverse Fourier transform Fourier transform of z omega so therefore the complete response is written as z r equal to a r e to the power p r t plus 1 by a r this integration minus infinity to plus in infinity h r omega f r omega e to the power minus i omega t d omega remember that omega is the frequency content of the exciting force and there may be several frequency which may be reflected in excitation if one can uh, carry out the discrete Fourier uh, transform analysis then for each of the frequency predominant frequency the integration can be repeated and it can be superimposed so here you can see one thing that this part is nothing but homogeneous solution homogeneous solution which mainly depends on the natural frequency of the system and also the initial condition now here it is the time response due to forcing function now in this state space approach one thing you can notice that nowhere I have used the assumption of proportional damping so decoupling procedure is done without any assumption of proportional damping in other case when we use the second order system and attempted to decouple the system equation using um, model parameters that is uh, mode shapes and natural frequency then we assume that the, uh, the uh, uh, damping is proportional to mass or proportional to stiffness or maybe a proportional to linear combination of mass and stiffness with that assumption we could able to decoupling the equation of motion but here in the state based approach you have seen because the augmented matrix that I cast in this uh, problem A and B are symmetric matrices so therefore the decoupling procedure is similar to this second order decoupling procedure but one advantage is there that proportional damping assumption is not necessary whereas proportional damping was uh, assumption was necessary in case of second order decoupling procedure ok so once you get the zr then you can find yt yt is the response of the generalized coordinate that uh, you can see here ok now let us now come to a problem which uh, is a very practical uh, problem and that problem is of interest to the vibration of highway bridge so here the problem is beam subjected to moving oscillator you can see that mass is supported here you can see that is the mass mass is supported by your this spring that is the suspension spring this model represents a vehicle so this model actually mass dashboard system represents a simple vehicle model where m is the mass of the vehicle and part of the suspension and mw is the mass of the wheel but 
in general mass of the wheel is small so in derivation mass of the wheel is neglected but here you can see that here the mass matrix uh, mass of the system is given as m and c is the damping matrix here of course a single degree freedom system is used so no question of matrix come here because it will be a single equation and k is the stiffness parameter of the spring that is the spring constant and the beam was of length l and mass of the beam is m per unit length m is mass of the beam per unit length EI is the flexural rigidity, EI is flexural rigidity and CB is the damping of the beam. It is a distributed parameter, so damping of the beam per unit length. So all the parameters are per unit length and it is a combination of the continuous system and lump parameter system okay now you can see the equation of motion of the beam can be written as ei ei del 4y by del x4 cb that is the damping term viscous damping term cb del y by del t and you can see this is the inertia term okay and this is the elastic term so combination of this term is equal to this external force fxt now here in this case of problem that i was showing earlier there is a mass spring system you can see that beam deflects due to movement of the mass a mass is moving at a constant velocity v V is the velocity of this mass. Velocity of the mass. And Z is your this uh, displacement of the sprung mass measured from the neutral equilibrium position of the spring. And C is the damping of the vehicle. You see C and K represents the stiffness parameter at damping of the a uh, system and this damping may not be a proportional quantity okay so therefore in this type of problem the state pace method will give the justified solution now at any instant of time this distance xt is given by velocity into time at any instant of time t now here v is taken as a constant now if the velocity is variable If velocity is variable that means vehicle has a acceleration in that case x can be written as your say say some constant a naught plus a1 t plus a2 t square okay so in that case this term represents the effect of acceleration of the vehicle and this is a constant velocity term and this is another constant term that is the reference point is not at the zero then this appears here so here the x is uh, measured from the left hand end so that x at any instant of time is given by this v into t okay and mw is the mass of the wheel mw in general is very very less than m so in practical computation mw may be neglected okay why is the deflection of the beam now you can see that end of the spring or end of the suspension system spring mass system that is here this is the spring quantity here it is subjected to a displacement field y and here it is subjected to displacement field z 
So that means the relative displacement of the spring is z minus y and relative velocity of the dashpot is z dot minus y. So as a result of this you will get a coupling equation between the this moving mass moving oscillator and the beam. So beam has a deflection y and you can see the spring force that are generated here is nothing but k into z minus y. Similarly the damping force generated here c is equal to z dot minus y dot. So this is the difference here and uh, due to this base excitation here the base is subjected to displacement base of the vehicle or moving oscillator. So therefore the force imposed on the beam will require both the displacement of the mass or velocity of the mass and displacement of the beam at this location and the velocity of the beam at this location at this location. Now assume that the deflection is a superimposition of the mode shape function and generalized coordinate. So that assumption is used because we are using again the linear mode superimposition method. By substituting this here this equation is substituted here and then multiplied by both sides by a function phi k x and then integrated over the beam length using orthogonality condition. Orthogonality condition is very important here orthogonality condition again I am citing this this orthogonality defined in terms of mass i and k are two different modes equal to 0. So orthogonality condition here you will get 0 if i and k are not equal but you will get 1 you will get some quantity say m i is the generalized mass if i is equal to k. So that relationship is used and by virtue of this relation orthogonality relation that I have written here you now get a decoupled equation eta i double dot plus 2 j i omega i eta i dot plus omega i square eta i equal to q i i varies from 1 to t. You see the system is still second order system but uh, ultimately it will be converted to first order system if one if one wants a solution in the state space method. Now here you can see that omega i that appears is the natural frequency of the beam. Natural frequency of beam ith natural frequency. So this is the ith natural frequency of the beam. So this represents a uh, decoupled equation. So i is here 1 to 2 and if you consider infinite number of modes theoretically then there are infinite number of equation but such infinite number of equations are not possible to solve. So one has to truncate to a finite size. Generally it is seen that first few modes are sufficient to compute the displacement and bending moment accurately. So therefore in practical computation we will limit the number of modes to a finite size say 5 modes or 10 modes or 3 modes like that. Now right hand side this qi will be given as qi equal to 1 by m bar i that is the generalized mass integration of fxt phi i x dx. Now you can see fx t is the distributed force in the continuous system modeled for the beam. Okay. So beam is modeled with a continuous system therefore we have taken a distributed force. But since the force is varying with time and in position only, position also the force is varying with time and position because it is a moving oscillator problem. 
So therefore, we represent the distributed force by a direct delta function. So distributed force now can be written as k the stiffness and relative displacement z minus y x t y because it is a beam displacement so it is a function of x and t whereas z is the displacement quantity and it is a lump parameter system so it is a function of time only then your uh, this this is of course with k and then the static load mg is there and this is multiplied by direct delta function x minus vt because at any instant of time the position of the mass or the wheel position on the beam is represented by the coordinate x1 which is equal to v into t for uniform velocity v is taken uniform velocity uniform velocity v so therefore position is defined as x vt x is equal to vt so with the help of direct delta function we have represented the distributed force okay direct delta function has important property you know because any function say phi x if multiplied by direct delta function x minus vt and it is integrated between any limit the result is phi into vt so that advantage is used here for getting the generalized force at ith mode so generalized force a force at ith mode becomes k z minus instead of y x t now we are using that phi i v t eta i t so this is the force that is transferred from the wheel plus the mass of the vehicle that is m whereas mass of the wheel is very less compared to the total mass of the vehicle or mass of the vehicle with suspension system so therefore mw is neglected okay but one can also include mw there is no hard and fast rule multiplied by phi i vt vt is the actually the position of the wheel at this instant t okay so model equations of the beam now can be written as eta i double dot plus 2 j i omega i eta dot i plus omega i square eta i equal to 1 by m i bar that is the generalized mass into k into z minus i equal to 1 to infinity phi i v t that is the position of the wheel into eta i t plus m g uh, phi i v t so this is the beam equation now you can see in this beam equation which were earlier a uh, independent equation appearing only as a function of eta or eta dot and eta double dot now the parameter z is also involved so the uh, response variable z is also appearing here so the each of the discretized equation is now coupled with the vehicle equation so therefore you require another equation to solve it hence we write the dynamic equilibrium equation of the sprung mass as m z double dot plus c z dot minus y dot x t plus k z minus y x t equal to zero since the uh, the displacement of the sprung mass is measured from the uh, neutral position of the spring so therefore this is the equation of motion for the sprung mass so we have two couple differential equation not only two the number of equation will be here it is one equation and here it is n number of equation if you take n number of beam modes so if one takes n is the number of beam modes the number of coupled equation in this case you will get is 1 plus n 
one is due to the vehicle equation only one lump mass is considered for the vehicle. If the vehicle is considered two lump mass system representing the wheel mass also then of course you have two vehicle equation and n number of beam equations. So number of equation now can be represented in matrix form m r double dot plus c r dot plus k r equal to f t where the r is the response vector that should contain this variable z eta 1 eta 2 dot dot dot. There is uh, the limit I have not written but if you consider the n number of modes then it will stop at eta n. Okay. So you see it is a couple differential equation and one interesting thing you will get if you see the coefficient of damping term and coefficient of stiffness term in each of the equation you will find that both the uh, parameter z and eta are appearing. So you will get the stiffness and damping matrix here is a time dependent. So this is the special feature of such moving oscillator problem along the beam. So stiffness and damping matrix is time dependent as a result the eigenvalue, eigenvalue and eigenvectors are also time dependent. So remember this, so in, in the moving mass oscillator, this is a simple model for beam mov moving oscillator, but there may be um, multiple degrees of freedom in the vehicle. So in that case, the vehicle degrees of freedom may increase and uh, you can see the equations are coupled and eigenvalue eigenvectors become time dependent because the vehicle position changes with time. So if I want to express this uh, in matrix form, you see that M matrix is a completely diagonal matrix, there is no doubt. So the only diagonal elements are non-zero and other elements are zero. Okay. By virtue of this uh, orthogonality relationship and the transformation that we have done, the terms in the mass matrix for the beam modes are appearing as one. But if you do not divide both sides by generalized mass, then of course your this 1 by mi term, mi term should remain here. But here I have divided both sides by mi and therefore in your this mass matrix the diagonal terms in the beam mode are 1. So the response vectors are this and force vector in the first case in case of this equation for the lump mass that is the vehicle mass it is first element is 0 whereas for the beam equations you will find that the forces are mg by m bar phi 1 vt then mg m bar phi 2 vt so like that it will go on increasing so that is your first mode second mode like that so you can go up to nth mode okay now let us see the damping and stiffness matrix if you see the damping and stiffness matrix here you can see from the first equation because our response vector that is the velocity vectors will be z dot eta 1 dot eta 2 dot etc so therefore you can find here the first element is c then here in the first row the other elements are minus c phi 1 vt, vt defines the position of the vehicle or moving oscillator minus c phi 2 vt like that. In the second row you will find second row will be constructed from the equation of the beam. So first mode equation of the beam if you take i is equal to 1 then you will get c phi 1 vt 2 j 1 omega 1 plus c phi 1 square vt divided by m1 bar 
then C phi 1 Vt, phi 2 Vt, m1 bar, m1 bar, etc. because we are here taking the first mode into consideration. Similarly, for the second mode equation, you will get here that minus C phi 2 Vt divided by m2 bar, C phi 2 Vt phi 1 Vt divided by m2 bar and 2 j 2 omega 2 plus C phi 2 square Vt by m2 bar etc. Similarly, other elements can be written, it is not 0, it is that the other elements will follow, but if you truncate it up to limited number of modes, then you can close the matrix. Okay. Similarly, damping uh, stiffness matrix can also be written, extracted from this equation k minus k phi 1 vt minus k phi 2 vt then second row is from the first beam equation k phi 1 vt divided by m1 bar omega 1 square plus k phi 1 square vt by m1 bar plus k phi 1 vt phi 2 vt by m1 bar like that you will find and uh, this will not be limited because here theoretically we are considering infinite number of modes but if you want to consider it for limited number of modes the matrix will be some size say we considering the number of modes as 5 5 beam modes then size of the k matrix and c matrix will be 6 by 6 now let us give an example develop bridge vehicle coupled equations in matrix form, if the vehicle is idealized as a single degree freedom oscillator moving with constant velocity v, the bridge is idealized as Euler Bernoulli beam and take the number of beam modes 1, so beam is simply supported. So in that case, you will get two equations only, so matrix will be size of 2 by 2. Now here you can see that uh, the mode shape function of the beam for any mode is sin n pi x by l and r is equal to response vector z eta 1 transpose and m1 bar that is the generalized mass in the first mode is ml by 2. Vehicle equation of motion is m z double dot plus c z dot minus sin pi v t by l into eta dot 1 t plus this is due to stiffness k into z minus sin pi v t by l into eta 1 t. Here the sin pi v t by l is coming due to the substitution of v t in here, substitution of v t in place of x. So you will get the mode shape that needed to be multiplied here for first mode you will n is equal to 1 and x is equal to vt, so you are getting it is the term sin pi vt is appearing here, similarly here, okay. This is the lump mass equation. Similarly, beam equation in the first mode you will get eta 1 double dot plus 2 j 1 omega 1 eta 1 dot plus omega 1 square eta 1 minus 2c divided by ml z dot plus 2c ml sin square pi vt by l eta 1 dot plus 2k by ml into sin square pi vt by l eta 1 equal to mg sin pi vt by l. Now this square term comes here because with this equation that you are getting earlier for the damping equation these are the two terms with the beam damping. So here you will find this term will be added to this term. Similarly for stiffness matrix you will get these two terms should be added and in the diagonal element accordingly in the damping matrix you are getting here C is from the first equation and here you are getting 2 j 1 omega 1 plus 2 C by ml sin square pi b t by l. Actually, it was C by M1 bar and M1 bar is nothing but ML by 2. So, therefore, this term 2C by ML appears. So, other terms are minus C sin pi Vt by L minus C 
टू सी बाई एम एल साइन पाई बी टी बाई एल वन थिंग यू कैन नोटिस दैट मास मेट्रिक्स इज ए कन्सटैंट मेट्रिक्स लाम पैरामिटर सिसटेम इट इज ए डायगोनल मेट्रिक्स बाट दि डेम्पिंग मेट्रिक्स इज टाइम डिपेन्डेंट बिकज अब दि चेज चेज पजिशन अब दि वेहिकल उथथ रेसपेक्ट टू टाइम सो सिन्स दि टाइम इज इनवल्व हियर यू आर गेटिंग दि डेम्पिंग मेट्रिक्स इज शुड बी इवालुएटेड एट इच टाइम इंटरवेल फर एप्लाइंग टू दि मोड सुपारभेशन टेक्निक सीमिलारलि स्टीपनेस मेट्रिक्स हियर यू आर गेटिंग के माइनस के सैन पाई भि टी बै एल माइनस टू एल डिवाइडेड बै एम एल सैन पाई भि टी बै एल ओमेगा वन स्कोर प्लस टू के बै एम एल सैन स्कोर पाई भि टी बै एल एंड हियर यू कैन सी दि फोर्स वेक्टर आर जिरो एम जी सैन पाई भि टी एल सो साम इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग उ हेव नोटेड हियर डेम्पिंग एंड स्टीपनेस मेट्रिक्स आर टाइम डिपेन्डेंट रिफ्लेक्टिंग दि कपलिंग अब बीज मोशन उथथ दि वेहिकल बाउंसिंग द आईगन भेलूज एंड आईगन वेक्टर्स आर टाइम डिपेन्डेंट दैट इज भेरि इम्पर्टेंट कन्क्लूशन हेन्स वाइल सल्विंग सार्च कपुल प्रब्लेम यूजिंग मोड सुपारपोजिशन प्रिन्सिपल डेम्पिंग एंड स्टीपनेस मेट्रिक्सेस आर टू बी आपडेटेड एट इच टाइम इन्स्टैंड एंड अकॉर्डिंगलि द आईगन भेलूज एंड आईगन वेक्टर्स उल बी चेंज ओके नाउ लेट अस सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ डेक सरफेस रफनेस इफ दिस बीम इज कंसीडर्ड एज अ मॉडल ऑफ आइडियलाइज मॉडल ऑफ ब्रिज देन ब्रिज डेक मे हैव सम डिफरेंस इन इलिवेशन एंड दिस इज ड्यू टू वेरियस कॉजेस सच एज कंस्ट्रक्शनल डिफेक्ट डेमेज ऑफ पेमेंट बाय हेविली लोडेड ट्रक पोर्ट होल्स जयंट्स एट्सेट्रा इवेन एट द एंट्री ऑफ ब्रिज some difference may exist due to approach slab settlement so this gives a initial bounce to the vehicle which contributes more to the bridge uh, dynamic load so therefore here we are considering the change of bridge elevation that is termed as a bridge deck profile along the central line of the bridge and represented by function hx which is a function of space however in calculation of the force in the spring and dashboard viscous force in the dashboard and the spring force in the spring we required the uh, especially in the uh, dashboard system we required the derivative of h so derivative of h is calculated by this procedure h dot equal to dh by dx into dx by dt equal to b dh by dx so dh by dx represents the slope of the Uh, bridge profile and b is the velocity constant velocity with which the moving oscillator or vehicle moves so here you can see this difference will exist in case of roughness that you have additional difference that h so therefore the spring force that are calculated is z minus h this h is the additional term that is reflected here similarly here the additional term in the velocity h dot is relative velocity h dot is appearing here so this is the modification in this equation if one considers the roughness of the profile so similarly in the beam equation we will get the modification of the term here h dot is coming and here h is extra term that is added h is the pavement elevation payment elevation which is a function of x but x is related to time so therefore derivative process h dot can be related as v into dh by dx okay so with the help of this two equation now we can solve it by any technique whether you use the mode supervision technique in the state based domain or you apply any numerical scheme you will get the response of the generalized coordinates of the beam uh, of the continuous system and then also you will get simultaneously the displacement of the sprung mass here it is called sprung mass because it is supported by the spring now the sprung mass displacement especially the acceleration is very much useful for analyzing the right comfort so right comfort of the vehicle decreases if the roughness increases 
So, this from jet quantity is very important to quantify the uh, right comfort. Example 2. Let us give an example here for a problem where a moving oscillatory force is existing on a beam. So, this force F1 cos omega p t is a oscillatory force, but it is moving with some speed. So, this speed is given as B. This type of problem has historical importance because this type of problems was frequently encountered in bridge vibration, railway bridge vibration due to running trains. So, because of this oscillatory force of the running train, there is a possibility of getting a resonance condition if the damping is not sufficient. Whereas, in case of highway bridge, resonance condition may occur at a very high speed which is not possible in this case of uh, movement of the vehicle along the beach. So, that will never be allowed. So, resonance condition is only theoretical in case of highway bridge, whereas in case of railway bridge, the resonance may occur if the driving force of the vehicle matches within one of the natural frequencies of the beam. So, here we take the force as F1 cos omega p t direct delta x minus v t again v t is defining the position of the moving oscillator. So, take the following parameters generalized mass ml by 2 if it is simply supported phi 1 say first mode sin pi x by l equal to x equal to v t phi 1 is equal to sin pi v t by l. So, pi v by l that is considered a frequency term and it is the speed frequency, speed parameters. Sometimes it is also called the speed parameters. So, here we are getting phi 1 is equal to sin capital omega 1 t. Capital omega p is the frequency of the pulsating force and capital omega 1 is the frequency parameter of the uh, driving force. Okay. So, therefore, we get the equation of motion neglecting damping as eta 1 double dot plus omega 1 square eta 1 equal to 2 f by m l because m l by 2 is the generalized mass. So, we are getting this cos omega p t sin omega 1 t. And this can be this cosine and sine term can be decomposed using the trigonometrical identity. So, we write here f by ml sin omega p plus sin omega capital omega p t p plus capital omega 1 t minus sin capital omega p minus capital omega 1 t. And uh, we again write this uh, segregate this. So, actually response of this system can be found as the response of a single degree freedom system that we have encountered earlier subjected to harmonic force here frequency in one case is omega p plus omega 1 in another case is omega p minus omega 1 and force amplitude in one case it is f by ml in another case force amplitude is minus f naught by ml. So, superimposing the two known solution for the harmonic force, we can obtain the eta 1 and from eta 1 we can get the beam response y. So, once the eta 1 is obtained, then beam response can be found at any time at any location is yes, phi 1 x eta 1 t if only the first mode is considered. However, other modes can also be considered as superimposition of the modes can also be applied here. Next problem we are considering a beam traversed by rolling mass. Now, here you see the mass is rolling and therefore, inertia effect of the mass has to be taken in the forcing term. So, including the inertia effect of the rolling mass, we are now writing the distributed force on the beam as mg minus m capital M del square y by del t square into direct delta x minus v t. Here again v t represents the position of the mass. 
So with model superposition technique that we discussed earlier so many times, the equation of the beam neglecting damping can be written as eta kth mode. In the kth mode it is written as eta k double dot t plus omega k square eta k t equal to 2m by ml into g minus uh, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity phi i v t eta i double dot t sin k b t by l. Now if I consider simply supported case then mode shape function is and first mode k is equal to 1. So mode shape function is sin pi x by l and x is replaced by v t. So therefore this term sin pi v t by l is coming and here you can see the coefficient of acceleration term is not 1. This term is included here and it represents the effective mass. So this is due to rolling action of the vehicle. So the coefficient of the acceleration terms now becomes 1 plus 2m divided by ml sin square pi v t by l and coefficient of eta 1 remains same, displacement remains same. So the effect of rolling mass is to alter the coefficient of this acceleration terms in the beam discretized equation and therefore if I want to obtain the mid span deflection, mid span is location is x is equal to L by 2. So we can get this considering only first mode we can get y L by 2 comma t is equal to eta 1. So if I find out eta 1 by solving this equation then I get this uh, beam response at the mid span and beam response at the mid span will be critical. But one thing you see that here again the, the mass term here the effective mass term is now is time dependent because the rolling mass position is varying with time. So therefore you have to consider it the problem uh, to solve it that each time instant your system natural frequency will be changed because of the contribution of rolling mass in the inertia term. So second term inside the parenthesis is nothing but effective value of the moving mass that varies with time or load position. While in the right hand side of the equation you will find that that is the effect of only the static mass that is moving mg. So therefore a constant moving force where you have uh, solved earlier. This solution can be used as a particular integral provided this the effective mass term is completely utilized to get the new Eigen frequency that is most important because the natural frequency of the system will change if you consider the effect of uh, this moving mass. Okay. Now let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture first we discussed about the decoupling procedure in state phase system using complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Solution techniques for time response of the first order system was discussed in time domain and frequency domain. Thereafter three problems of continuous system and lump mass such as number 1 beam with moving oscillator, number 2 beam with pulsating force and number 3 beam with rolling mass were discussed. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.